Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 14, Context Managers, coming from the previous episode where we spoke about async. Context managers in Python are their way of uh, cleaning up uh, resource usage and uh, to make it easier because there is no real concept of having scopes or uh, closures. Therefore, this is uh, their solution to go about this. And in Rust, well, you can simply use uh, scopes or closures to get a similar effect. Um, let's look at this in our code. This will give you a better idea of what's going on. I have prepared uh, an example. <clears throat> on the left, Python, as usual. On the right, we have the Rust thing that is similar. So in Python, if we, for example, would handle files, then we would use a file manager that we have written ourselves, which doesn't make sense because there is, of course, an existing context manager from the standard Python library for an opened document. But to illustrate how you can implement the, your own context manager and how they work, I have implemented uh, my own here. If uh, we now use the with keyword, then we can instantiate our context manager and give it a name. And then I can use this F to access it. And in this case, we have just uh, implemented the file uh, to be returned directly. And I can use the write to write something to the file. And then afterwards I can test if this file was closed or not. Now the whole advantage of this uh, file manager, context manager is if something happens in this file write, this makes sure that at the end of the operation, the file is closed no matter what happens. So if you have uh, an exception thrown <clears throat> or some other problem, this will still make sure that the file is closed. Another good usage for this is, for example, database connections <clears throat> and uh, similar things where you want to clean up after yourself after you've used uh, the resource. Now, to implement uh, your own, you have your file manager class. You initialize it with the stuff that you need. So in our case, it's a file name and the access mode. And uh, then you define uh, the magic function enter to have a context manager. This then simply uses the open of Python and returns the file object. And the exit, this will happen once the context is uh, left. This may, in this case, it closes the file and that's all it does. And you can even handle the exceptions that potentially happened on the usage of your context manager. On the right, this is not really needed in this way in Rust because in order to clean up after yourself, all you have to do is create a scope. So you use uh, curly braces. So if you were to simply open a file right to it and uh, then uh, do nothing further. Once the scope ends, the compiler will write the file close for you on this space and then clean up the used memory. To mimic the behavior with our with statement to enter a context manager, we can build it ourselves as well. So here I have my final manager struct that I have written a constructor for. I can directly use the same as I do on the left <clears throat> in Python. Then I implemented a method called with that takes a closure. So this is a way where I can mimic the behavior of a context manager in Python. And within the closure, I do my actions. This will have to return a result, of course, to handle errors. And then within uh, this with method, you handle the errors and make sure that the resource is being cleaned up if there are problems coming from this closure. The closure gets one argument. This is the context manager's handled resource. So in this case, it's a file. And after that, we can also use the context manager to check if the file was closed. The implementation that I built is, of course, not 100% correct, but it could look like this, for example, you'd uh, define your struct. So in this case, we called it file manager as we did in Python. You give this uh, path buffer. You have the access mode, which is probably smarter to not use a single character for that. Um, then you would have an optional file instance that 
you can check against. Then you build uh, your constructor to have ease of use. And then you would implement your width. That is a generic for the argument f that has to be a type function that takes a file reference, a mutable file reference, and returns a result. So if the closure or function passed in here um, matches these requirements, this width will work fine. Inside this width method, I implemented it in a way where it checks if you are actually writing. If yes, it creates the file handle, attaches it to our file property, then it calls the closure that we have given in as the argument with the file handle as a mutable reference and uh, this should hopefully work <laughs> passed as the first argument to our closure and after that is finished we set the file back to none and our if file closed checker is simply checking if we still have a file handle or not so if it's none we don't and therefore the file is closed. This is not 100% correctly implemented because what you would actually have to do is make sure that you don't use those uh, question marks to exit back the IO result. If there is a problem with creating the file or writing to it, you would here have to implement full on error handling that then would, in the case, especially here when calling the closure, make sure that the file is unset. What Rust will do anyways is if the file manager that you've instantiated goes out of scope, it will clean up after you. So it will close the file and get rid of the memory that this optional file property takes up. But if you want to help your existing Python programmers to feel at home, you can uh, create context managing uh, structs for them if you like. Let's quickly uh, run the two codes. So on the left, we can simply use Python context manager pi and uh, it works fine. On the right, we can uh, Rust compile the context manager RS. It compiles and we can then run the context manager and uh, it has the same output. Another option that you have if you really want to make sure that you explicitly handle resources, is you can implement the drop trait for your struct. This would then mean that when the struct is dropped, so either going out of context or you explicitly in your code use the drop function, this would then uh, trigger an action that you want to do. This can be useful for example database management, but um, standard stuff like files have that basically already implemented. Thanks for watching. Coming up next in the From Python to Rust series will be how to write a Python module in Rust and then use it in Python.